Hello everyone. It's been over five years since I last posted a video on my channel. Quite a long time, I think. I've been trying to get back into it for a while, but I found that I kept setting the bar so high on the production values that I never ended up being happy with what I made. So with this video, I shot everything on my old 2018 GoPro and tried to document the process of building a unit for under our TV to cover up these sockets and wires and allow us to set up my old surround sound system again. <laughs> So the idea is to get a couple of scaffold boards, like use scaffolding planks, chop them up into pieces and join them together, and then kind of have two shelves joined together by two steel squares made out of box section. So I went out into the other part of the house where there's been some construction going on recently and these boards were left over from all that stuff. But of course they're just rough boards covered in kind of cement dust and building debris junk so we need to clean them up a bit. So the first thing we need to do is remove the bands from the end of the boards. So this is left over when they were actually scaffold boards. I think it holds the edge of the board together and stops it from splitting. But obviously we won't need that in the final setup. Then before we can run it through the thickness, we need to make sure there's no screws or nails or anything because um, any kind of metal would damage the blade there and nick it. So we've got this little metal detector, which is quite handy, that picks up any bits that might be left over. And the next thing to do is to run it through the thicknesser a few times. And now the idea is not to kind of get a perfect finish on the board, because that would take away all the texture and part of the attraction of using this old wood. Um, but it kind of helps flatten it so some of the boards have got like a curve in them um, and just makes it a bit more even. But we, as I say, we don't want to take it to 100% flat. So after that's done, the next step is then to kind of sand them down a bit more. I use a combination of a belt sander and an angle grinder with a sanding disc. So you can see there as I sand it, there's the patch down the middle that the thicknesser has taken off. And then I just want to kind of sand the rest of it to remove some of the cement dust and bring out the wood grain a bit more. Thank <laughs> you. 
Once that's done, we can chop the boards to length. Then the next step is to set the boards up so they can be joined together. We're using biscuit jointing here which means you cut out a little channel in the side of the wood and then there's a thing called a biscuit which goes in and you add glue and the biscuit swells up and it all sticks together quite nicely. So these are the biscuits going in here, you can see the glue in the little slot that the machines cut first and then this little thing called the biscuit goes in and we tap it in with a hammer. And then of course there's two shelves, so we just do the same thing repeated for the second one. So these are then clamped together while the glue dries. And then off camera what we did was add some strips of wood along the ends of the boards. So you see here we've done the same thing with the biscuit jointers and cut a couple of strips to go here and then we'll trim them off so they're flush and kind of sand them all down. And I'm just covering them in what's called bry wax, which is a kind of a furniture wax that we've used a lot elsewhere in the house. It has this really good effect of highlighting the grain, as you can see here. And then we come on to building the little steel frames that hold the two shelves apart as well as give us the mounting points to fix the whole thing to the wall. So I start here by drilling the mounting holes both for the shelves and for the fixings to the wall just purely because it's going to be easier to do it now before we weld these pieces together. Then a quick little chamfer just to remove the burrs. Then next we bust out the old stick welder and weld these things together. So first we make two corner pieces and then we join the two corner pieces together to make the rectangle.
Let me check to make sure it's square-ish and then make another one. Then I gave these a quick clean up just with some white spirit so I could then give them a coat of linseed oil. We also gave the wax that we put on the scaffold boards a quick polish as well, which gives it a nice sheen. So with all that done, it's time to then go back in the house and start to put this thing on the wall. Now this wall is made of thermalite block, which is the kind of very lightweight blocks that are good for thermally insulating the property. And then it's covered with plasterboard in a what they call a dot and dab fashion, which is where they put a blob of plaster on all the blocks and they stick the plasterboard to it. So this means you have the plasterboard surface and it has a very small void behind before you reach the block. And this is typically very hard to fix things into, especially quite heavy things. So for this project I found these fixings which are specifically designed for this exact situation, so I thought I'd give them a go. And they're made up of kind of a really long, typical wall plug, what you would normally use, and then they have a little metal tube that I guess is supposed to bridge the void between the plaster and the block that you then hammer in. So we put three of these fixings into each one of the steel frames, which I thought would be enough. So then the obvious thing to do to test it is to sit on it, which didn't go too well. Oops. But I think it's going to be fine for the stuff that we're going to put on there, so we'll repair it and then I'll show you at the end we braced it underneath with a couple of small little legs. So this is the completed unit. I've installed all of the old surround sound equipment that I had, along with a record player and a Blu-ray player, and the Nintendo Switch cradle dock thingy is hiding under there as well. So you can see, even though we had to add those two extra legs just to give the shelves some more support, you can't really see it, and it still looks like a floating unit, which is what I was going for. To be honest, it probably would have been fine if I didn't sit on it, but then I sat on it, and so it needed a little bit more reinforcement. We managed to hide a lot of the wiring underneath the top shelf with the help of some little uh, plastic pipe clips that are screwed into the wood. Overall, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them below, and I'll see you on the next one.